The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. We're designed, I'm about to go somewhere now, that you see what you say. And, and that believing is seeing. Believing is seeing. When, when you're designed to believe what you see. Yes. Notice in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16. This was when uh, Elisha was surrounded by the Syrian army. And he answered Gehazi, his servant, and said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Watch this. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord... I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and what did he do? He saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Next verse. And when they came down to him, came down to Elijah and he prayed unto the Lord and he said, smite these people I pray thee with blindness. And God did it. But notice how you didn't have any more problem out of Gehazi once he saw. So you're never meant to go where you can't see. And I believe you weren't meant to say what you can't see. I'm going a step further now. I believe that's, that's way back when. See, Jesus said some things. Mark chapter 10, verse 34. Jesus said some things. Because I think he could see it. He said, and they shall mock him, and they shall scourge him, and they shall spit upon him, and shall kill him. And the third day he shall do what? He shall rise again. Genesis chapter 11, 11 verse 1. And in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, this is a heathen world. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to and let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to and let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and nothing shall be restrained from them, come on, which they have. They could see it. And if you could see it, you can do it. Now understand, the world has words too. So they can speak things and send out curses against people. But you have words. Do, do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. No. You speak God's words. Yeah. And you speak words filled with what? Faith. And your words are superior to any other words. God is with you. God is watching over his word. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse, verse uh, 12. He's watching over his word to make it good. Are you with me here? So your words are going to be more powerful than theirs. Jesus' words were more powerful than the devil's words. I know the devil uses curses, sorcery, and all of that to put that storm in the air when they were going over in Mark chapter 4 and verse 35, going to the other side. But that storm came up. And I'm telling you, that storm was a system. Say system. He put up a system with words. And that system had to be brought down. Yes, sir. 
And God had Jesus to speak words. Say amen to that. But when he spoke these words, these words were more powerful than any other words. And I'm telling you, if you can see it, if the Holy Ghost makes it real inside of you, and you speak it, God watches over it to, to perform it. Look what God says about himself, and you're going to act like him. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, come on, and shall he not what? Make it good. See, he knows if you release words of faith, it commits God to make it good. Look what he says in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. That's what you should say. It shall not return to me what? For it. But it shall. It shall. It shall. Accomplish which, that which I please. And it shall. Prosper in the thing where unto I said it. Turning faith loose. That's powerful stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. It's going to do the job. It's going to do the job every time. Well, this is a principle for you that, hey, wait a minute. I, I can do something with this here. I can decree we're turning jails into boarding schools. And if I can see it and say it, then here comes God to watch over his word. Now where did I get the seeing from? I got it from the Holy Ghost. Where did the Holy Ghost get it from? He got it from heaven. Because my job is thy kingdom come, thy will be done, come on, on earth as it is in heaven. So I'm speaking God's will into existence in this earth. If I take God's word, this is why God's word works so well. Look at John chapter 1 verse 1. This is why God's word works so well. In the beginning was the word. The word was what? With God, but the word also what? So if I got God, I got the word. And if I got the word, I got God. What can stop God? God can rearrange the earth because of what you speak. Watch this. And he doesn't need the 300. See, the enemy knows this. And he's hoping you don't ever know it. The law of confession. Powerful. So you are his representative. You've been sent here to speak his words. And you're sent here to change things on this earth. The word of God is an all-controlling factor. Yes, sir. Say amen to that. First Samuel 17, verse 11. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, Goliath, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. afraid. Verse 16. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself how many days? Now they're out there. They're out there so long until David's father said, listen, here, take some more provisions to your brothers. See, he, he had no idea they were going to be out there that long. 
that this Goliath was busy speaking things. See, and those things many times have the spirit of fear with it. Got them out there, dug out in foxholes, and the father said, listen, take them some bread and cheese. So David comes up there, and look what David does in verse 44. His words now, because in the last days, it's going to be about words. It's going to be about words, because words are going to be more powerful than a mighty army. And the Philistines said to David, you come to me with this, and I'll give thy flesh unto the fowl of the air, and to the wild and the beasts of the field. And then said David unto the Philistine, now you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a shield. But I'm coming to you in the name. Now if you look in Revelation 19, he says, his name shall be called the word of God. In the name of the Lord of hosts, of the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied this day, will the Lord, what? Deliver you into my hands. Say number one. And I will smite you and take your head from you. Say number two. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowl of the air. Say number three. And to the wild beasts of the field. Say number four. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. David decreed five things he was going to do to that army. Say amen. Amen. And did all of them happen? They happened because he believed what he spoke was going to come to pass. You know and I know there's no way that a young boy at 16 years old with a slingshot can stop an army. But he preceded it with words. Man, when you go in the interview for a job, speak. Say, they going to love me. Come on. Come on. You say, well, I knew I was in jail for 12 years, but they going to love me. Man, they going to overlook. See, decree a thing. Do y'all hear what I'm saying here? So what's happening? How about down here with uh, Mordecai and Esther? Esther chapter 4, verse 13. Isn't this good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. See, religion doesn't teach you this. No, I'm not talking about evil against people. I'm just saying make an observation. That's why people, the church is, is what's, what's happening here. No, 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 it's not supposed to be. And look what he says. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Now you think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all of the Jews. For if thou altogether hold your peace at this time, then shall enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from some other place. But you and your father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And that's why you have been born. You have been born to face the king. Ungodly laws, all kinds of, 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 of things 
and systems and so forth that have been established by ungodly people following the, the wrong spirit. And you can take words and undo it all. Yes. Understand what God wants to do. He wants to change things yes. for the better. Yes. And the church has got to stop, you know, hiding behind the wine press. Yes. And it doesn't take but 300. In David's case, it took how many? One. I mean, that take, doesn't that take some, some, some chutzpah for you to say, I'm not only going to kill you. I'm going to take your head off. Because after he cut, cut his head off, he took a head and ran back to the camp with that big old, big old head dripping with blood. Let me come over here. Big old head. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? David was an achiever. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so what am I saying? He wanted to see something happen. He'd been reading all this in the covenant, and his people 40 days with the Goliath selling roof tickets. He said, wait a second here. Who do you think you are? One more with a big mouth. Yeah. But you saw it. But God trained him. Look at Psalm 1, um, 144 verse 1. God trained him. See, talk about the spirit of God. Look what he said. Blessed be the Lord my strength which teaches my hands to war, come on, and my fingers to fight. Psalm 119, verse 33. Psalm 119, this is David now. Watch this. He said this. He said, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I'll keep it until the end. Give me understanding that I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. He said, give me understanding. You know you deal with a kid, a little kid. You said, don't do that. Why, daddy? You know, the first thing they ask is why. You want to say, because I said so, that's why. But give them understanding. Son, the thing, that thing will burn you. That's, that's how, you follow what I'm saying? Psalm 119, verse 97. This is David. This is wonderful. This is why he had this. Oh, how I love your law. It is my what? Ooh, that'll do it right there. That'll do it right there. It's my meditation all the day. Now, let me give you another point. You were created and designed to let words do the work. Faith focuses only on the invisible. Faith is not designed for the visible. It's designed for the invisible. When your manifestation comes, faith is gone. Because faith always deals with the root. And the root is something that is not seen. What you see physically has a root. In Mark chapter 11, let's go down to verse 12. And on the morning, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree far off having leaves, he came to it, happily he might find anything thereon. But when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. 
For the time of figs is not yet. And yet is in the italics in my Bible. And Jesus answered and said to it, he's talking to trees, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. He's teaching how to. the planet with words. Words made it and words are going to fix it. Now, he said that and down to verse 19, it comes back and he says, and when evening was come, he went out of the city, watch this, and in the, in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Where are roots? Underground. You see what I'm saying? He doesn't deal with the problem on the level of the leaves. Because that'll keep you toiling, struggling. But let's cut this argument off at the root. Now you're going to wake up the next morning wondering what you've been fussing about. Because the agent behind that argument is gone. You've dealt with him. So if he can do it for arguments, he can do it for disease. the word is God. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. Let's look at Abraham. Genesis chapter 17 is where he's going to make a covenant with Abraham. And look at verse 4. Let's start there. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. This is God talking now. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of what? Many nations. Have I what? When do you think he made him a father of many nations? Before where? The foundation of the world. You got what I'm saying? Yeah. And God now is going to have Abram to now change his focus. 
he's now going to focus only on Abraham. Which means father of many nations, of multitude. Does he have any kids at this point? No. no. But what is God going to do to change his destiny? He's going to change his speech. He's going to have him to say it so much, it's going to drop down in this place in his soul. And now he's going to be decreeing things and next thing you know, his body at 99 years old starts to be looking a little bit like a 30. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Sarah starts switching. Yeah. Uh, 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 come on now. Because he changed her name to Princess of Nations. So Sarah started, hey, hey, hey. You, you know what I'm saying? Number one. When you speak God's word, filled with faith is superior to any other word. Now, I'll say that again. I'm saying when you speak God's word and it's filled with faith, it's superior to any other words may have been spoken over your life or may have been spoken by a government. doesn't make any difference. God's word with faith is superior to any other words. Number two, to change Abraham's destiny, God had to change his speech. What did he say, call yourself? He said, call yourself a father of a multitude. Now, this is before Abraham had any, any children, and his wife couldn't have kids. And so as a result of that, here they were stuck in a certain destiny. But God said, let's change that destiny. Let's begin to call things that be not as though they were. I'm changing your name to Abraham. It meant father of a multitude. So he had to call himself that so that God could change that destiny. Isn't that powerful? Well, I'm not sure what they've been saying about you, but you can change your destiny. Praise God. Well, this is Bill Winston saying until next time, we love you.